Hi, my name is Rachel Paxton, and today I'm going to show you how to can sweet and sour sauce. What will you get out of this class? You will learn how to make and can sweet and sour sauce. I will lead you through the process step by step. I'll give you the recipe and the canning supply list that you can download and print out for future reference. You will find those in your course materials, and you will also gain the confidence you need to try more canning recipes on your own. My name is Rachel Paxton and I'm a freelance writer and mom of five children ages 28 to 6. This is me and my husband Dave. We've been married for 20 years and these are three of our kids. Zachary and Christian are twins and they're almost 11 and Trenton is 6. I've been canning for more than 20 years and I am also the owner of the website creativehomemaking.com. I have to say that sweet and sour sauce is one of the most favorite things I've made in the past couple years. I've tried a lot of different canning recipes and um, in the last couple years I think this is my most favorite recipe that I've tried. It is really good. It tastes better than the sweet and sour sauce from the store and anybody who tastes it is going to want some so you're going to have to make extra. It makes a great Christmas gift. So when you're garden is growing like crazy this summer. This is a great thing for you to make from the tomatoes and bell peppers you're growing in your garden. For this recipe you're going to need four cups of tomatoes, two cups of onions, one 20 ounce can of pineapple chunks, two cups of bell peppers, two cups of sugar, two cups of white vinegar, a half a cup of sugar, and three quarters of a cup of clear gel. You're also going to need a boiling water canner, a canning rack if you're using your own stock pot, a jar lifter, a wide mouth funnel, pint or half pint jars. I used pint jars for this recipe. A vegetable chopper is optional and an immersion blender is also optional. This is what the boiling water canner looks like. You can buy a kit on Amazon for about $32. There is a link on the supplies list that is in your course materials that shows which one I recommend. It looks just like this one. And with the kit, you get the canning rack, the canner, and the um, jar lifter, and also the funnel. So for $32, that's a really good deal. You can use your own stock pot to can. If you do use your own stock pot, you're going to need a canning rack. And this is what a canning rack looks like. It comes with the kit I just showed you, but you can also buy these separately for about $10 to put in the bottom of your own stock pot. Just keep in mind that your pot needs to be tall enough that when your jars are in it that there can be an inch of water above your jars. And the purpose of the canning rack is to keep your jars off the bottom of the pot or they can get too hot and break. This is what the jar lifter looks like. They come with the canning kit. The wide mouth funnel also comes with the kit. This is a really nice funnel that sits in the mouths of your jars so you can easily put stuff in them without spilling. This is what an immersion blender looks like. If you don't already have one, they're about $20. Um, there's also a link to this in your supplies list. Um, it's not totally necessary to have this for the recipe, although it's really nice. If you want your sauce to be smooth, um, you're going to need to blend it somehow. It won't cook down to a smooth consistency on its own. An immersion blender allows you to put the blender in the pot while you're cooking it to blend it and that's really nice especially when you're working with hot mixtures. But if you don't have one of these you can take the sauce out of the pot and put it in your blender in small batches to blend it also. That will also work. This is just easier. This is the vegetable chopper I use. These are really nice when you're making salsas or um, any recipe where you need to chop up vegetables in small chunks. It works great for onions and bell peppers and tomatoes. I use this all the time. There's also a link to that on your supplies list. It's not necessary, but it makes your job go a lot faster. The first thing you need to do is fill your canner about three quarters full with water and heat it to boiling. Next you want to sterilize your rings and lids in the dishwasher. This recipe will make approximately four to five pints of sweet and sour sauce. So that's how many pint jars you'll need. And so if you're using half pints, you will double that amount and make about ten half pint jars. Um, if you don't have a dishwasher, you can sterilize the jars and rings and lids by boiling them in boiling water. 
but if you have a dishwasher this is the easiest way to do it if you are reusing jars that's fine you just cannot reuse lids but you can reuse jars and rings first thing you need to do for this recipe is chop the tomatoes um, I don't usually peel the tomatoes when I make this recipe they blend up fine so I don't worry about seeding them and peeling them for this recipe so um, you just need to chop them in um, very small pieces or use your chopper and throw away the top that where the stem was attached and I also chopped up the bell peppers like that so combine your tomatoes onions pineapple without the juice you want to um, keep the juice but don't put it in yet and your bell peppers and combine those in your stock pot add the vinegar and sugar and bring it to a boil next you want to use the clear gel the clear gel is a white powder it looks just like cornstarch you're probably not going to be able to find this at the grocery store it is basically cornstarch but it is a modified version of cornstarch and when you're canning um, the clear gel is very um, beneficial when you're wanting to make when you're, it thickens sauces like cornstarch does and uh, you can't use flour or cornstarch to thicken things when you're canning because it becomes unstable when you cook it in the canner and, and it also becomes unstable being stored for long periods in the jars and so clear gel is something they've come up with that makes a nice smooth clear sauce but it also stays stable when you're canning it and so it's really important to use this the only place I've ever been able to find it locally is in a small locally owned grocery store where they have a lot of bulk items and, and like it's kinda like a health food store and so you might be able to find it in bulk at a health food store um, it's called clear gel and they also have um, can call it ultra gel also the clear gel has to be heated to thicken your sauce but ultra gel does not have to be heated it can be you can put it in cold items or or boil it and it will thicken no matter what the temperature and that's what I like to use because clear gel is wonderful when you're making gravy or any kind of sauce that you want to thicken really quickly um, it, this is just a magic substance I don't know who invented it but it is wonderful and you can buy it very inexpensively on Amazon that's the best place to buy it so I've included a link to it in your supplies list so you you will definitely need that for your this recipe or your sauce will end up being really thin and you won't be happy with it so um, so you, in, in this step you want to mix your sugar and clear gel together and mix in the pineapple juice and I actually did it backwards I, that's why it turned out so chunky um, you actually want to put the juice in the bowl first and then mix in the clear gel and the sugar but it doesn't really matter because after even if it becomes lumpy like this after you put it in with the other ingredients and use the blender it'll blend right up so it doesn't really matter but it does work better if you put the juice in the bowl first and then mix in the powdery ingredients so you mix this up in a bowl and here's what the clear gel looks like it looks just like cornstarch I store mine in a canning jar so you want to stir your clear gel mixture into your tomato mixture and at this point I use my immersion blender to to make it smooth and again you can also put it in a blender to make it smooth but you will have to do it in small batches because it'll be too much for, to put in your blender at one time and afterwards this is what it looks like it will thicken quickly if it's not thick enough you can always add a little bit more clear gel until it's the thickness that you like but you'll be really pleased with how much it thickens and how smooth it is it's really pretty and I forgot to mention with the bell peppers the reason the sauce is so pretty is because I used yellow and orange bell peppers you can use green peppers I haven't tried it but I would think that it would change the color of your sweet and sour sauce if you use green peppers so I recommend using yellow and orange and even red peppers and you'll end up with this pretty orange sauce okay next you want to ladle your sauce into your sterilized jars leaving half an inch headspace the headspace is the amount of space between the top of the sauce and the top of the jar 
The head space is important because when you're canning or processing your jars, the mixture in the jar will expand and if there's not enough room left in the jar, um, the jar can explode and you don't want that to happen. So whatever headspace the recipe calls for, pay attention to that. Next you want to wipe the rims of the jars with a damp paper towel or dish towel and place the rings and lids on the jar. You want to wipe them off so that your jars get a good seal. Next, place your jars in the boiling water canner and process them for 30 minutes. This is again for quart si or not quart um, pint size jars. You process for 30 minutes. Um, if you this is for um, elevations a thousand feet and below. If you live over a thousand feet in elevation, you will need to process your jars for a longer period of time in order to get the right temperature. So if that's the case, there is an altitude adjustment chart included in your course materials. So refer to that, but if you're at a thousand feet in elevation or below, this is the correct processing time. And also, when you are processing your jars, um, don't start timing until your water starts boiling. If your water is not boiling yet when you put the jars in, that's fine, but don't start timing it until the water is boiling. And you also want to make sure there's an inch of water above the jars. If there's not, you need to put some more water in there. After you're done processing, you want to use your jar lifter to remove the jars. You set the jars on a towel on the kitchen counter to cool. Let your jars sit on the counter till they're cool. When the jars seal, you'll hear a pinging noise. Sometimes they'll seal in the canner, but they should be sealed within a half an hour after you take them out. After a couple hours, you'll know if they have sealed or not. If a jar does not seal, it can be refrigerated and still eaten within a couple weeks. You can tell if it's sealed or not by pushing your finger down in the middle of it. And if it goes down and up again, then it is not sealed. It should be flat. And your jars that have sealed, you can store it in a dark, cool area for one to two years or more. And like I said, you want to make as many of these as you can because you'll end up giving a lot of them away if anybody tastes it. This stuff is really good. It's good on chicken and egg rolls, anything you do sweet and sour sauce on. So give it a try and see what you think and I hope to see you again soon.